Hi everybody, and it is Wednesday, February 28th. I had to be absent today. Um, I was out of the building at some training, but you had a substitute today and you um, sure did get a lot done on the gizmo. So today you are working on a mineral identification gizmo um, and you are also turning in your homework from the previous class, which was your rocking across Virginia. Let's take a look at the gizmo that you did in class today. So you had uh, mineral samples here. You actually had about 26 mineral samples. And you were looking at the different properties that we used to identify minerals. So you see that you have um, appearance. And within appearance, you are looking at the common crystal shapes. And you are comparing your mineral to these shapes, like hexagon, cube, rhombus, irregular, rectangle, and pyramid, and trying to see which one you thought that it matched. Then you are also looking down here um, for appearance at the luster. Luster is the way that light reflects off of a um, mineral sample. So you have metallic, which that really looks like tin foil, um, or something metal. Then you have glassy, pearly, and dull. Also, you have in your properties that you tested today, density. Density is really important. And so density is the measure of how much mass is being fit into a certain volume. So when you take density measurements, you have to do two things. You have to first put your sample onto a scale. And so you can see that this sample A is weighing 36.4 grams. But then after that, you have to figure out what the volume is. In math, oftentimes you are finding volume using a ruler, and you're doing length times width times height. But when you're looking at mineral samples, these mineral samples are really irregularly shaped. So we use a graduated cylinder, and we use the water displacement method. So we're going over here, and we're placing this into the graduated cylinder, and you saw that that water just got displaced up, and it got displaced by 14 milliliters. So the volume of the mineral sample is 14 milliliters. Now, to calculate the um, density, you have to use a calculator. So here we are, and we're going to do um, density is equal to mass over volume. So the mass was 36. 0.4 grams, and you're going to divide that by the volume of 14 milliliters. So you see that the um, density of sample A is 2.6 grams per milliliter. The next property that you looked at was hardness. So with hardness, we're trying to figure out how hard the mineral sample is. We're using Mohs hardness scale. It goes from 1 to 10. 1 is really soft all the way up to 10, which is the hardest. So diamond is up at the hardest at a 10, and talc, which is a mineral used to um, make baby powder, is very soft. You can break it up with your fingers. That's down at 1. So to test this, first we look at the fingernail test. If you can scratch a fingernail, um, or if you can scratch the mineral sample with your fingernail, then it has a hardness over 2.5. If it can, if your mineral sample can scratch a penny like this one can, then it's harder than a 3.5. Now, if it can scratch a glass plate, and this sample is scratching it up, then the hardness is over a 5.5. And then finally, if it can scratch a steel plate or a steel file, then that mineral sample has a hardness over 6.5, but we don't know if the hardness is a 7, an 8, a 9, or a 10. We just know that it's harder than a 6.5. The next test you looked at is streak, and streak is looking at the um, what color the mineral is in powder form. So over here, this white box right here, this is representing a white tile plate. And when you take your mineral sample and you rub it across a white tile plate, oftentimes you're going to get a color on the plate. This sample is too hard because sample A is harder than a 6.5 on Mohs hardness scale. It's not going to rub off on the tile. But say we look at sample um, C, for instance. When you rub that on this streak plate, it's streaking yellow. That means that this mineral, in powder form, is yellow. Sometimes the street color is the same color of the um, actual outside of the mineral, but sometimes you're surprised and it's streaking a different color than, it, than the mineral is on the outside. The last test you did is the um, reactivity to acid test. So you're taking some hydrochloric acid 
and you're dropping it on the sample. So this sample is not reacting to hydrochloric acid, but you did have a sample that reacted, and it was sample um, D. So you see how it's fizzing up when you put the hydrochloric acid on it. That's letting you know that this is reacting with hydrochloric acid and that this mineral is made from calcium carbonate. So because I was out of the building today, I didn't get to go over notes with you, but you should take a look at these at home. They're attached to this video. One of the um, main things that you want to be thinking about is how do we define a mineral? A mineral is defined by um, five characteristics. It's naturally occurring. It can't be made in a lab. It can't be man-made or synthetic. It's inorganic, meaning that it's not made from anything that was ever alive. It's solid. It has an orderly crystalline structure and it has a definite chemical composition. This is the homework that was due in class today when you had Miss Miles as your sub. If you didn't turn this in um, in class today, you want to make sure that you're getting this done and that you're turning it in as soon as possible so that you can get um, full credit. That's it for today. I'll see you all on Friday. Um, take care and stay safe.